OneNote has been around for a while. Originally announced in 2002, over 20 years ago, it has heavily involved over the past years. To date, it's available on Windows, Mac, iPad, iPhone, Android devices, so pretty much anywhere. But one thing hasn't changed. It always was and still is free to this day. The app is geared more towards keyboard note-taking, but its handwriting component works really well and doesn't make you switch between modes or to another screen to actually handwrite, which is really, really great. I'm Jean with Paperlike, and today I'm taking a closer look at what makes OneNote into a viable option for you guys. You guys that just like me take notes on your iPad. If you've ever used Microsoft Office, then OneNote will feel extremely familiar. Just like Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, it features a toolbar at the top of the page where you can find all your styling and formatting tools. This familiarity is actually a big plus because it makes it so much easier for you to get used to the app. And that's pretty great because unlike other note-taking apps out there, OneNote actually doesn't have a homepage or a dashboard to start your navigation. Which, funnily enough, is actually pretty similar to what Apple Notes' display is. So OneNote uses cascading sidebars to help you organize your notes, with the current page appearing on the right side. Once you start writing, most of the sidebar actually vanishes, making space for the actual note page and the note page column for easy navigation. And if you want that to disappear as well, you just need to tap on the full screen icon. Whenever you access the app, it will automatically open to the last page you were working on. While this is great if you just want to continue where you left off, it can be a little annoying if you're opening the page to start something completely new. Lastly, OneNote's UI is restricted to a list view, which I don't mind, but I feel it gives you less options. It's somewhat of a departure from apps like GoodNotes and Notability that allow you to switch that up. The great thing about OneNote is that the UI is actually the exact same throughout all platforms. If you log in into your OneNote account on your browser, it will look exactly the same as it looks on your iPad, which is awesome. On iOS, OneNote allows you to structure your notes in three layers. Starting from the leftmost column, which holds the notebook, you can then add sections and pages. You'll also have deeper levels of organization possibilities if you're using the desktop app or the browser version. But those won't appear on your iPad or iPhone apps. Navigating through your notes is actually quite easy, especially if you use tags a lot or take full advantage of OneNote's search capabilities. OneNote tags can be added anywhere in the text of your notes, and there are several preset functionalities as well. For example, reminder tags are especially helpful. These notify you at a specific moment in time. OneNote's optical character recognition search capabilities recognizes handwriting and texts within an image. While you can search through your PDFs or other documents, you can search through notebooks, sections, and pages for specific keywords. As for note creation, it's possible from anywhere within the app. And this comes with a minor issue. Every time you create a new note, it will create that note in the specific notebook and section you're currently in. So unless you want to create that new note in that section or that notebook, you'll have to actually circle back to whatever section you want to create that note on. Good news is that once you have all your sidebars open, you can use the buttons at the bottom of each bar to quickly create a new note section or page. You'll notice that creating a new node is actually stripped to the bare minimum. There are absolutely no templates on the iPad app. OneNote's note-taking structure actually gives you a lot of flexibility. It basically allows you to easily drag and drop sections anywhere on the page. Actually, think of the page more as a whiteboard, with the ability to get creative and vary both typed and handwritten notes as you see fit. OneNote's menu setup actually looks slightly different from other note-taking apps, but it's fairly easy to get used to. The toolbar is simple and very easy to navigate. Home, Insert, Draw, and View are always available, and each of these serve their very own function. Home holds all formatting tools and is primarily for typing text. Insert allows you to add media, tables, PDFs, and other types of files. Draw is used for handwriting or drawing, although you can still type text in here too. And finally, View allows you to change how the page looks which is where you'll find your page styles and background colors. On the iPad, you can also add password protection to your notes in here. 
handwriting is accessible to the entire note-taking space, no matter which tab or toolbar you have selected at the top. This creates a seamless and very cohesive note-taking experience across the board, because there is no need to break your flow to change menus. When you're in the draw tab, you'll have access to your pen, highlighter, eraser, lasso, and shape tool. While there is only one pen available, which compared to other note-taking apps is really underwhelming, you can change it in size and colors. And this is where it gets a little more interesting in OneNote. Because you can choose from a range of colors, including iridescent options and inks that change colors as you write. Which, for a free app, is pretty unique. Okay now, writing on an iPad can be pretty challenging due to the glass screen. And while OneNote actually does its best to offset that challenge, a screen protector by Paperlike can make the surface of your iPad feel like real paper, greatly improving your experience. I'll link it in the description. Now, back to OneNote. Other than that, you'll find a great set of extra features on OneNote, including a media player, a math assistant, and an audio recording tool, which compared to Notability or GoodNotes are fairly limited, but it's always good to have them on a free app. OneNote allows every user to store up to 5 gigabytes of data, for free, obviously. Now, if you take a lot of notes, 5 gigabytes might not be enough, I get that. Luckily, OneNote gives you a couple options to upgrade your storage capabilities. The first is to subscribe to a Microsoft 365 account, which gives you one terabyte for $6.99 a month. The Microsoft 365 account will give you access to the full Microsoft Office, which is great, but you need to take into account that everything that's worked on those apps will take up space on your storage as well. If you don't need all that space, you may prefer to upgrade your storage to 100 gigabytes simply, and you'll pay a monthly fee for that. OneNote automatically backs up into OneDrive, which is Microsoft's cloud storage, and unfortunately OneNote doesn't let you create any backups on other cloud services. On a positive note, you can sync OneNote on unlimited devices across all platforms, which is a big plus if you use devices that run on different operating systems. The only condition is basically that you create a OneDrive account. As for sharing, you can create a link, email, text, or airdrop a link to a nearby Apple device, for example. You can also email a PDF version of your note, all of that without any further expense. Password protection is possible as well, and you can decide whether others have read-only access or if they can edit your notes. Usually I close off my reviews with a pricing section, but as I mentioned throughout the whole video, OneNote is completely free. You'll get full access to all these features from the get-go, no need to invest any extra money for it. A few upgrades are offered, but none of them actually improve your experience on OneNote besides adding some storage space. All in all, and even though it comes with some limitations, OneNote is pretty stacked for a free app. I just love the flexibility and freedom it gives you. Whether taking notes, sketching, or mapping out your thoughts, OneNote allows you to customize your pages pretty much the way you'd like. And that's actually one of the main things I look for in a note-taking app. And this pretty much rounds up this video. I really hope this OneNote review helps you out. But hey, I'm really curious. What's your favorite note-taking app? Let me know in the comments. And talking about free apps, I'm a big fan of Apple Notes, even more so since iPadOS 17 introduced some killer new features. If you want to know more on the subject, you definitely should check out my latest video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.